This is round two of All Mixed Up. Entree is the theme of the day, and our three student chefs from the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale, Maha, Shireen, and L.A., will be presented with two unique ingredients selected by our judges. And we're gonna challenge the contestants like never before on any episode of All Mixed Up. This is the Entree Round, and I'm your host, Ralph Pagano. As a reminder, here are the ever so important judges who'll be giving out the stars to our student chefs. Grazia Pratt of Simply Potatoes. John Gray from Bubby's of San Francisco. Chef Eric Schlossberg, chef instructor here at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. When we come back, we will reveal the main ingredients and the temperature will be rising in the all mixed up kitchen. We are at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale and it's time to continue the quest of finding the latest all mixed up champ. Entree round is upon us, and it's about to get serious. Maha, Shireen, L.A. Game face is on, I see. Now in front of you, you'll notice that there is a bowl on a plate covering something, maybe nothing underneath there. I want you not to touch it. I don't want you to move that dish. In fact, if you move that dish or that bowl before I tell you to, you lose 20 gold stars immediately. Bubby's pickled green tomatoes I happen to love. Right now, you're each going to have to make an entree. You're going to be giving 30 minutes to create something that's delicious using Bubby's pickled green tomatoes. That bowl, that dish, that plate stays right where it is. Got 30 it. minutes on the clock, and your time starts now. Today, I'm making a marinated Chilean sea bass. I'm using the Bubby's pickled green tomatoes and a Japanese salsa. Behind, behind. Can I move this out of the way? Right now, I'm in competition mode and I'm ready to win no matter what I have to do. Anything goes. Let's see what happens. Today, I wanted to produce a potato and Parmesan cheese crusted mahi-mahi with a tabbouleh that was made from green tomatoes. I had a really good marinade and I don't have it, so now I'm making something else and I have no idea what I'm making, but it's gonna be amazing. Oh, look at that piece of fish, mm -hmm. that's what this thing. Yes. What do you have in mind for the tomatoes today? Oh, the tomatoes are going, or your tomatoes, oh, I'm gonna tomatoes. make a yeah. Japanese um, pickle green tomato salsa. Awesome. And what are, what are you up to today? I'm going to do the tomatoes two ways. So today I'm going to make a little mango salsa and Ooh. put them in there. And then I'm also going to make a tabbouleh. So what's in the bowl? Uh, right now there's parsley. No, I mean, what's under the bowl? Do you have any idea? Oh, underneath there? I'm really hope it's nothing. Hopefully it's a All big right. bowl of nothing. <laughs> Can I borrow your towel, please? Uh, I don't know where it is. You're going to have to find it. Sorry. If you don't have something or you don't know what you're doing, don't ask me because I'm going to win, not you. All right, girls. Can I have your attention for one second, please? I'd like you all to each remove the bowl right now and see what you got in front of you. You have in front of you the incredible edible egg. And a spoon. And a spoon. I'm thinking, great, I can use the eggs for my, my dish. I can incorporate it, it's easy, no big deal. But in this particular challenge, I'm going to challenge your skills of center. Hold out your left hand, please. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All I have to say. LA, I'm searching for your center right now. I'm thinking, got this. This is easy. Egg on a spoon, no problem. I can chop with one hand. I have really good balance. Continue to do what you're doing. Chop your tomato, crush your garlic, make your tabbouleh. Should you not break the egg, you get five gold stars. <laughs> Should you break the egg, you lose five gold stars. <laughs> Every egg you break is five gold stars. I can't do that. I need both my hands. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I've never, ever experienced anything like this. You better be good if you're not doing yoga, ladies. <laughs> Thank God I've done yoga for a little dress. bit, huh? Excuse me, behind, behind. Oh my God, behind. Unfortunately, my knife wasn't as sharp as I thought it was going to be. So I'm trying to cut the tomatoes and it's not going through. Now, I don't know how often you work with garlic and how you have to chop it with one hand while you're holding an egg. That's not a very common thing, but it's pretty difficult. 
How much time do we have? Snack get crazy. Forever. Oh, forever isn't enough. I tried to uh, cut one of my lemons no. and the egg breaks. If anybody wanted to. Oh. <gasps> Son of a. What if I put it back on? But a it's break open, is open. a break, oh my, my friend. You're gonna be the best. That's five gold stars deducted. Awesome. Habibi. So I just broke an egg. I shouldn't have done it. Try to catch, uh, cut something when you have an egg in your hand. Doesn't work. <laughs> I hate this egg. You hate this egg? I hate it. I hate this little guy. That's what I'm talking about right there. Come on, little tomato. Come out, come out. Come. My knives were sharp enough that I didn't have to use two hands. Egg challenge is over. Put your eggs down. Two hands and you go at it. Oh my god, thank you. I lost uh, the whole five minutes. I didn't get anything that I need to get done done. Gotta work 10 times faster now, which sucks. Whew. It's getting hot. I hope you ladies are ready. I gotta have to cook my fish. I have to cook my bok choy. I have to make this sauce. Oh my god. I burnt the top of my fish, um, so I had to use a new one, and I only had four minutes, so it's not possible for it to be done. Raw or not, I'm putting it on. So I look to my left, and I see sea bass, and it's golden brown, and it's beautiful. I look to my right, and I see a salad with some kebabs, and I'm like, wow, well, they have two great dishes. I I'm, I'm scared at this point. What is happening with these gloves right now? 50 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. Holy moly, the top of the blender was not coming off. I can't, oh, it's okay. I'm grabbing with my hand, it's not coming off. I'm using it with the bottom of the spoon or the tip of the spoon, it's not coming off. I was like, I was truly afraid that the secret ingredient was not going to be on the dish. What if I don't put my hand on a plate? What am I gonna have a mango tabbouleh? That <laughs> doesn't work. Today I incorporated the green tomatoes and then I also did a mahi that's um, crusted in the simply potatoes as well as the um, as some Parmesan cheese. The potatoes are terrible. The potatoes just take everything away. I would have just eliminated that completely. Now, you know, I like the way she used the, uh, the Bubby's pickled green tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it adds a little color, which I like, and uh, the flavor comes through, as I say, without being overpowering. I did a spring mix with goat cheese, some walnuts, and then I did a lamb with a compound butter of thyme and rosemary. And the sticks are very ugly. The, the halfway charred and burnt bamboo sticks. I think the overall flavor's good. I'm just not getting a lot of the tomato taste like we did with the prior dish. We get a lot of requests for how do you use the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a thrill for me to see that the girls come up with a lot of different ways to use them. I think it came out pretty good. A lot better than I expected it to come out. I have made a poached Chilean sea bass, and I've also made a Japanese pickle green tomato salsa. Well, I think it might be a little underdone. I'm not getting into the flavor of the tomatoes. I think it's being overpowered a little bit by the cilantro. When we come back, our students are gonna take a ride on the merry-go-round I call the entree round. Well, right now, we're gonna be using these Simply Potatoes shredded hash browns for your next dish. But in front of you, I've also included another secret ingredient. Simply Potatoes shredded hash browns is going to be paired with. I honestly thought it was gonna jump right out at me. What the hell is that? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh my, oh my. I was, I, I was surprised, um, but I've seen it open before. Um, it's a fish. Okay. <laughs> it's in the ocean. What are we thinking? Of course it comes around the ocean. It's a sea urchin. It's a sea urchin. Is indeed ding, 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 ding. Circle gets the square. Sea urchin is definitely the game. Is it, do we, is it inside? Is, what is this? I'd have never worked with this before. <laughs> Cut. 30 minutes on the clock, and your time starts. Now. 
And I'm looking at the sea urchin, I'm like, what the hell is this? Hey, Maha, how are you doing? Hi, Chef. How are um, you feeling about this? No pressure. Yeah, no, just no pressure. I'm noticing that the two other uh, contestants are, are running because they don't know what they're doing. So I open, I'm doing what I'm doing, and I kind of felt, hey, I got this. It's the all mixed up. Entree edition, they're battling it out. I can't explain to you the smell that it gives you. Oh, my face at this point, I know is not a very good face. Cut it, hold your breath, cut it, hold your breath. And it's really hard to cut. Behind, behind. I'm concerned about time because I'm thinking, how long is it gonna take me to open the sea urchin? Looks like you tackled that sea urchin pretty quickly. Yes, I am making a classic steak fritz with a Asian twist. And of course, I have a little sea urchin to figure out what I'm gonna do, but I think I have a great idea. What was your original plan today? I was gonna make a slider, and I'm, continue, I'm gonna continue to make a slider. Oh, great. I'm gonna take the hash browns, and I'm going to pan fry them into the bun instead of an actual bun. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, LA. Hi, chef. I'm mm -hmm. here for you right now. Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. I want you to win five gold stars right now. <sighs> I knew you were gonna. It's gonna be an easy question. The question is, how many different varieties are sea urchin in there in the world? <laughs> a, under 50, B, over 100, C, over 200. I'm smart, but come on, dude. <laughs> Give me a chance, you know? <laughs> Give me an easy question, I don't know. I'm gonna say under 50, A. There are over 200 varieties of sea urchin out there in the world, LA, right there. Really? Unfortunately, your diving has been limited to uh, one area where there's only three. A few. <laughs> <laughs> LA's doing a great job of cooking, but she's doing a lousy job of answering questions. Okay. All right. Speaking of stealing stars, the sea urchin lives in the ocean, as you're well aware. Ooh, wait. Am I taking it? <laughs> I just, I love the gamble chance of, of life, I guess. Life is a gamble. All right, give it to me. The typical sea urchin has teeth that are continuously growing. How many teeth in the sea urchin are continuously undergrowth? A, three, B, five, or C, seven? I don't know that answer. <laughs> I'm gonna go with B. B, five. Yep. Five is correct, my dear. You just won five gold stars. Yay. Oh my God, I'm excited. <laughs> and I did it. I used B and I got the answer right, and I am so excited. The sea urchin lives in the water. He swims around. He's got natural predators. A, is it the octopus? Is that your octopus? <laughs> that was my octopus. B, is it a starfish? Or C, is it a barracuda? I was either leaning towards a barracuda or an octopus. Octopus? Is that your final answer? Yeah. A, octopus? Yeah. Bah! The answer is B, starfish. Starfish? I season my beef for my mini sliders, and I run to the grill, I put it on there, five minutes pass by, nothing is happening. I'm getting very, very frustrated. Um, you might want to move your burgers. I'm going to move thy burgers. I just turned up the heat. The grill was not working. Well, it was working, but I believe that Maha turned it down. I told her before I need the right side of the grill. You're gonna use the left side of the grill because we were both grilling. And I need the left side. I'm sorry, left the right side. Left side or right side? Right side, right side. Uh -huh. How many more minutes do we have? Uh, the oil's not hot enough. When I put them in the oil, no go. So I looked under bottom and I'm like, yeah, it's at 350. Why is it not cooking? Um, and I just turn around and I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. Is the deep fryer on? No? It's not hot. It's not hot? No. It's on, but it's not hot. Right. Is, the fryer's not working. I'm thinking, I gotta put it in a pan. I turn it on really high, and I'm thinking, okay, cook, get warm, get warm, get warm. Cook. Cook. But I had it a little too high. And when I put the potatoes in there, it just stuck to the bottom. And <laughs> it just wasn't working. Getting scared a little bit. Come on, freaking cook, dude. The steak. It wasn't seared enough. It wasn't even cooked enough. I wouldn't even eat steak like that. So I said, you know what? 
I'm not going to serve steak that's rare like this. Yeah. Done. Uh, step away. We're finished, and LA hasn't played it. You can't serve an empty plate. If everything was turned on properly and I had all the equipment the way that I needed to, guaranteed I would have had it on the plate in 30 minutes. Chef Ralph said, we'll give you 10 minutes for five stars. I said, 10 minutes, it's on, let's do it, I got it. I've made an open-faced slider. I've used the hash browns to make the bottom bread, the sea urchin, beet horseradish, and some sour cream as a dressing. I think that's a very tiny entree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would wonder when the rest of the meal is coming. Mm -hmm. I do love the idea of a crispy potato bun. There's really not a lot of flavor in there. It's a very bland, oddly constructed dish with a very weird consistency. That's it in a nutshell, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Last entree, I didn't feel great about it. And this entree, I, I feel good right now. Today, I made a hash brown and Parmesan crisp with the tuna to go on top of that with a side salad with the sea urchin. I think that's about as good as it's gonna look. It just looks bad to me. Mm, the sea urchin's delicious. It mm. is good. Same that's really awesome. nice. And Buttery, yeah. very, very nice light flavor. I really like how she used the Simply Potatoes. I think the intent was good um, to keep it thin and crispy. That's, you know, how we recommend that you serve them. It's a classic steak fritz with an Asian twist. And it's pretty much just a little hash brown with a uh, skirt steak marinated in a little Napoleon shape. I think it's the most creative execution we saw. I love the idea of the layered meat and potatoes. You know, as far as incorporating the sea urchin, which I know I have to taste again, it's crispy on the outside, mm -hmm. and it's substantial, and the insides cook through. Um, I really like the texture of it. When we come back, we're going to find out who got the most stars for taste and presentation for using the Simply Potatoes, Shredded Hash Browns, and those crazy good pickled green tomatoes. Stay tuned. Welcome back to All Mixed Up. Our three contestants have prepared two different entrees using Bubby's pickled green tomatoes and Simply Potatoes shredded hash browns. Let's see what happened. Ladies, you ready to be judged? Hey, Shireen, the mahi-mahi was actually very nicely done. The salsa also was very attractive, but I thought it was cut too large. And the flavor profile between the acidity and your use of the tomatoes on that matched, matched beautifully. Maha. The use of Bubby's green tomatoes, pickled green tomatoes, I thought was interesting, but didn't really quite work for me. And the lamb was cooked beautifully. Inside was nice and moist and juicy, perfectly seasoned. And LA. The flavor was, was good, it was very uh, savory, but there was, there was no pickled green tomato flavor. And it was almost like it could have used uh, starch not a potato, <laughs> rice or something. Um, would have been good to be able to soak up the sauce because I thought the flavor was great. I don't know why you needed a gallon of sauce with a fish, but uh, the flavor of the sauce was nice. I, I think you could have been a little more artistic with the use of it. Shireen, I really loved your seared tuna dish with the Simply Potatoes. I think the flavor that you mixed into our hash browns was great. They had a good, you know, a good robust flavor to them and a nice crisp on them, so I really like that. The tuna also looked lovely, but I thought also it was just slightly overdone. Maha, um, your sliders, you get points with me for creativity. I love the idea of using our Simply Potatoes hash brown as a bun. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen anything like that before, and I think it just fell down a little bit on the execution side. The flavor throughout, I, I, I didn't like. There wasn't a lot of it. I felt it was all generally bland. L.A. Um, so you did a good job with what you pulled together. And I thought it was a very elegant presentation of a steak and potatoes. Um, and it's definitely something we'll be speaking about because I'd love to somehow incorporate it on our website. But you definitely pulled through and you got a plate made. I thought it was magnificent. Oh, thank you. L.A. Shireen. Maha. At the end of the entree round today. L.A. with 82 gold stars. Maha with 89 gold stars. And Shireen with 98 gold stars. $2,000 on the line, three women fighting it out. It's anybody's game. See you next time on All Mixed Up. That's how you gotta do it with one hand, baby. I thought it tastes like crap. <laughs>